Manchester United are looking to do business in the January transfer window as we get linked with Kolo Mwani. We've got some Sane story, Florian Verts, and more. We've got Luke Shaw news coming up. We've got news around what happened with Bruno Fernandes in the summer. Eric Ten Hag is struggling to boost the players' confidence and loads more manager talk. Talk about player unrest and... Manchester United are part of Julian Nagelsmann's future plans. This plus all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news that will keep you right up to date with everything. Welcome to Man United Review. Before we get into it, please smash a like on the video and let's jump straight into it. So let's go through, let's go through all the transfer talk first. So Graham Bailey, not the most credible, but decent source said that Colo. Um, Randall Kolo Moani has been offered to a number of Premier League clubs, including Manchester United. Did bring you news last week regarding um, Moani getting linked with United. For me, it would be a big no for the kind of price, considering he's not really in, in great form at PSG. If it was Moani when he was at Stuttgart beforehand, then yes, I think he would have been a great signing. Um, but I think they're going to be asking for like £70 million pounds or something ridiculous like that, which, you know considering he's not really had the best form at PSG would be a no for me, but definitely one to keep an eye on because there are a few more stories linking us with, with Mouani, which could just be, you know, paper talk, but it could also be, just be agents putting Man United's name out there to generate interest from other clubs. That's what we need to bear in mind with that. Now, Florian Plettenberg, who is a good source, said that Manchester United are also interested in Florian Verts, that would be an unbelievable signing. Do I think it's likely? Probably not. I think you'll probably end up at Bayern Munich because they normally hoover up all the all the best players from from their league. Um, potentially Manchester City if they're going to be looking at maybe a De Bruyne replacement. That's probably not beyond the realms of impossible. Neither I think he'd be a player of interest to them. Um, I'd love it. I would absolutely love it. I think he's a fantastic player. Um, you know and with the new kind of board and the new setup and stuff, I wouldn't say that anything's impossible with the, with, with what's going on at the moment, but I would kind of, you know, and Plenty Gold is a good journalist as well. So that is a credible source saying that we are interested, but is it likely? I can't see it personally as much as I would get excited about that signing. So I think he's a, he's a great talent, uh, but let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then there's been a lot of talk this week regarding, Leroy Sane, obviously Alfonso Davis, I bought you the last couple of days as well, Leon Goretzka. So these kind of updates have come from Christian Folk, who is a very reliable, incredible journalist, specifically when it comes to German um, and Bayern Munich news. Um, probably the most credible. He's the one that leaked the um, Thomas Tuchel to England story about three or four days before anyone else, while the British media was still um, kind of dismissing it, saying, oh, that's just Tuchel putting that, that talk out there just to try and um, hurry up United to getting him. And then lo and behold, he's now the new England manager. So it's very credible when it comes to German. Outside of Germany, not so credible. So um, now he's been saying that if Bayern Munich and Leroy Sane don't find a solution on a new contract, Manchester United will be at the table for the winger on a free transfer. He's on an absolute fortune. Um and I said it said it in the the, the video we, when we bought the news the other day. You know, he's coming to that end of his career, 28, I think, 29. I mean, he is a good player, though. And on a free transfer, I mean, it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. But I just do worry about wage and age when it comes to players like that. And the same with Goretzka as well. And again, Christian Folk said that Leon Goretzka would be open to joining Manchester United in the summer, depending on who the manager is. He does not want to leave Bayern Munich in January. So all the talks about Goretzka in January, I think we can put to bed. Apparently he wants to stay at Bayern Munich at least for this season, but could be a potential option in the in the summer. I think we'd not go anywhere near Goretzka personally. I think there's better midfielders out there that are probably younger, and I think that's the kind of business model we're going to go down. But, you know, credible sources saying that. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily dismiss it. Um but I think they're I think they're both kind of unlikely. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, another player that we've been heavily linked with over the last few days is um Alvaro Carrera. So, and Ten Hag was asked directly in his embargoed press conference last night around around signing him or bringing him back. And he had the following to say as a reply. We loaned him to Preston, he came back. Then we loaned him to Granada. He didn't play much there. And we had an opportunity to sell him, but we have a buyback clause which allows us to control 
the situation. We have to see and assess the situation to know if he can be an option for us. But playing at Manchester United is not so easy. Playing in the Premier League for Manchester United is not so easy. You need experience. You develop by playing at better clubs and in better leagues. So Ten Hag, in my opinion, reading those kind of comments, not necessarily dismissing the idea of bringing him back, but kind of also suggesting that actually, well, you know, you need experience we, and, and kind of saying that, suggesting that they did the right thing with him and that they're in control of the situation because of the buyback clause as well and that they're comfortable with what's kind of happening. Um, now, that would be an interesting option. I've shared my opinion on that on the previous videos um, regarding it. I I, th I I would, for the price, because it's talk, you're talking around, was it £15 million roughly, the buyback Clause is the latest that was kind of latest news that we've had, but that's not necessarily come from the most credible source. So we'll have to have to see if we get any more news regarding that. Um, but yeah, I think he would be a viable option to bring back. I think he's having a really good good season um, at Benfica. You know, would he be cheaper than some of the other options? That's something to consider. Would be classed homegrown. I mean, ticks a lot of the boxes for me, Fernandez. So definitely one to keep an eye on. Interesting comments. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Now, one of the reasons we'll be looking at potentially bringing in a left back in January is because Luke Shaw is not coming back anytime soon. He's still not training. That came from the Muppeteers. That is absolutely... Like, it's so frustrating. Like, he hasn't played for United since February, and yet he got himself fit to play in the Euros, played, what, a game, maybe, and then now been out again since the... since since you know, coming back to pre-season, absolutely pathetic. I think it's a terrible... The worst thing about the Shaw situation is the fact that we gave him a new contract recently and he's still got three years on his current deal. So this is going to be an ongoing issue because no one's buying Luke Shaw. That, that you know what I mean? It's, I think he's just going to end up at Phil Jones 2.0 where he just spends the rest of his three years just being consistently injured um, and then leaving for a free or retiring after that as well. And it's so frustrating. Like whoever gave him out that contract was just, you know, it's up there. It's up there with a, I wouldn't say the worst decision because he is a great player. It's just, you know, there's no thought or no longevity in giving someone that's been injury prone their entire United career a five-year contract. That was just stupid. Maybe a three-year one, do you know what I mean? Or like a like three plus one, but a five-year contract is ridiculous. But it is what it is. We can't change it. Um, but that's why potentially we would be looking at a left back in January. Um and then just on that, the Muppeteers also said that Luke Shaw is still not in training, um, thinks we will do business in January. United still want to move Casemiro on. Younger midfielders have been a huge priority. Left back and midfield could be addressed in January. So if we're looking at younger midfields, Nipan's one that we've been heavily linked with. Chris Rigg from Sunderland, again, another young midfielder that we've been kind of linked with. So could we be looking at doing maybe those sort of deals in January? Definitely a left back, considering the fact that Luke Shaw, you know, when's he going to be back and how long is he going to be back for? Nobody knows. Too, too unreliable. So definitely a left back would be a priority in January for me personally. And then, like I said, if you can move on Casemiro, Lindelof's going to be out of contract in the summer. So there might be an opportunity to get a little bit of cash for him before he walks out the door for free. So maybe with Ericsson. I know Ericsson's had a really good start to the season, but if you cash it, you're like he's going to walk away for free. If you get a couple of million pound in January, would you maybe look to do that as well? So there's a few um, kind of players potentially we could be looking to move on and replace in the January window. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Now, Mark um, Rob Dawson, who's a who's a decent source, and Mark Ogden, who is a is a credible source as well, did a interview with, and gave, gave some really good insights. And we'll go through some of the some of the other comments that they made in a bit. I just wanted to try and order it a little bit more structured. Um, so anyway, he said that Ashworth was happy with last summer's transfer business, but there's an acceptance that one window is not enough to fix a squad that has drastically underperformed. I would agree with that as well. And we always always knew that anyway. This is just the start. All the the you know, the years of shit under the glazers, the wastage of money, the overpaying of of average players, the new contracts to players that don't deserve it is not going to be fixed in one transfer window. Um, so it is going to take a bit of time, but I like the fact that it's acknowledged that, yes, we did all right this transfer window, but it's just the start of things to come. Um, and, and I kind of agree with that, but let me know what you think in the comments. And then another kind of, would you, some people, some of you would call this a mistake. 
I mean, and if you did and were, then fair play to you. You've kind of been improved right so far in regarding Bruno Fernandes. So Bruno Fernandes was prepared, um, prepared to leave this summer after growing tired of the club's repeated failure to deliver, but eventually stayed and signed a new contract after the club panicked and gave him a massive new deal. So again, that came from Rob Dawson and Mark Ogden, um, suggesting that that was a panic sign-in, renewing Bruno Fernandes' contract through fear of either him leaving um, or running his contract down potentially. So, And I know some of you were spot on when it came to Bruno in the summer saying that he shouldn't have been given the contract. We should have just let him either run his contract down or we should have cashed in on him as well. And like I said, with the start of the season he's had, He's probably been improved right so far, so fair play if that's your kind of opinion. Um, and what do you think it was a mistake? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that was a big mistake, kind of renewing Bruno's contract? Because if a player's not in the right headspace and wants to leave or was considering leaving, was it the right thing to tie him then down to like another contract and make him up there with the highest paid players at the club's? You know, I don't want to say it's similar to the Pogba situation, but have you seen the Pogba interview this week where he was effectively saying that he asked to leave United? Solskjaer said, okay, yeah, we'll let you leave, but Ed Woodward blocked him. And then obviously the 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 shenanigans, the injury started and everything for, based on that kind of situation. I don't think United should ever, ever, regardless of who it is, be in a position where um, if a player wants to leave and effectively hands in a transfer request, we shouldn't be keeping those sort of players. And, and I'm not saying Bruno's done that, but the fact that he was talking to other clubs and, and looking at other clubs suggests that maybe he's not in the right headspace and, and, is, uh, and is, you know, not quite committed to United. And is that what we're seeing in the performances as well? Who knows? Who knows? But let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, obviously, a lot of the other talk we've had um, going on over the last, well, however many months now is regarding the manager. So um, Christian Folk, again, good source, has said that Manchester United are already making a shortlist to replace Eric Ten Hag. There are three candidates. Um, Terzic is one. He, um, there has been contact with his management. Brought that to you in yesterday's in yesterday's video. Um, the other managers that he mentions, one is Sebastian Honess. So United and Bayern Munich approached Honess in the summer, but he wanted to stay at Stuttgart and play Champions League. Getting him mid-season would be very difficult. So Christian Folk kind of suggesting that if we were to change manager, getting him out of Stuttgart mid-season would be probably expensive and, and who knows if he would want to go. If he didn't want to go in the summer because he wanted to play in the Champions League with Stuttgart, why is he going to leave halfway through the season? That makes no sense to me. So maybe he's one of the managers that we've been kind of linked with or talking about going maybe for, for next summer. Um, and then the other manager that you mentioned, which would get me a little bit excited, is Nagelsmann. So Julian Nagelsmann is really interested in Manchester United. He has a clear plan of his career and United are part of that. However, at the moment, there is no chance for United as Nagelsmann wants to be in charge of Germany for the 2026 World Cup. So there is a big kind of bombshell from Christian Folk suggesting that Julian Nagelsmann, who I definitely think would be an interesting option to come in as United manager, um, actually already has United potentially in his plans going forward. So maybe, you know, in a couple of years' time, depending on obviously what happens with the World Cup, I think it will leave Germany regardless after the World Cup, is that is that a long-term? So do we get a short-term manager to then get another long-term manager in in the Gelsman in a couple of years? It's just a shame that he's not, um, that he's obviously committed to Germany because I think that would have been a decent, a, a really interesting option in the summer if he didn't kind of, because we were heavily linked with him in the summer, but um, obviously he decided to stay, to stay at Germany and recommit to them for the next World Cup. But that would be a definitely... Definitely one I would um, be interested in as a manager. I think he plays a really good brand of football and ticks all the kind of boxes that we would need. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, the more likely scenario, if anything happens with Ten Hag, is that Ruud van Nistelrooy will take over as interim, um, or in like at least until they maybe get in an interim or get another manager in. But it just depends on, obviously, who's available and what kind of happens. And then... Um, Rob Dawson and Mark Ogden had the following to say. So Ruud van Nistelrooy has has one-on-one -on -one meetings with players and there is a certain aura about him. Nobody would be surprised if he became manager. Now, this links in with some of the story I'm going to go, go through in a second that 
Rob Dawson and Mark Ogden were talking about behind the scenes stuff, but it's interesting. It's not the first time we've heard that Rude Van Nistrooy is doing bits behind the scenes. And it is more likely that if Ten Hag, if they do do decide to sack Ten Hag, obviously that's going to depend on results and performances. And if they don't improve, I, I do think they'll um, they'll make a decision maybe at the next international break. And then it looks likely Rude would take over, but it's not the first time. There's been loads of reports around how, he is behind the scenes as well. So um, I thought that was interesting that um, that it's kind of been leaked almost that he does have, you know, a little aura about him and they, they do, that, that nobody would be surprised if he was the United manager. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then Florian Plettenberg, again, good sources, said that Manchester United are interested in Ruben Amorin, have made inquiries about him and his situation. He has a release clause at Sporting next summer. So that could be an option in the summer. Um, Amorim... I think there's a few more question marks regarding him, but he's done a, done an unbelievable job at Sporting and definitely would be a manager high on my list personally. Um, if we were looking to looking at managers and replacements in the summer, definitely would be one that I would be um, personally interested in. But you just can let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then the final stories I've got for you are regarding, um, firstly, the confidence. So some players struggle to boost their confidence under Eric Ten Hag's hardline approach. One senior player asked low-level members of staff to give him motivational talks before games to help his morale. And again, that came from um, Rob Dawson and Mark Ogden, you know, suggesting that some of the players are not responding. And I think we can see that on the pitch. I don't know necessarily which players that would be. But I've said before in previous videos, I wonder if one of the issues with Ten Hag is the kind of language or the the message is not being delivered the way that it should be and players are not responding to it um, because that's not, you know, and that's almost what this kind of report is suggesting. What they were also saying as well, that Eric Ten Hag is, a very, blunt, is very blunt and direct. He's fundamentally an honest guy, um, but he had to be told last season to soften his approach with the players. He has, he is, he was too critical too often, but sometimes... It was down to his use of England, English, so suggesting that there's a bit of a language barrier. Um, and they went on to say that he speaks the language, but he doesn't have a great grasp of it or the nuances. For, for instance, he pissed off Casemiro last season by saying he was dropped for football reasons. Eric meant tactical reasons, but he ended up angering him by suggesting he was criticising him as a footballer. So I've, I mean, I've said that in um, one of my match reactions, I think it was, or before around, is there just an, just, just, just a communication issue with Ten Hag and some of the players where they're just not responding to him, whether he's t whether it's, you know, because the players are too soft and he's too hard or whether it's the language, do you know what I mean? I, I, I kind of can see something like that happening because I've been saying that for a while that I do think there is some kind of communication issue between the manager and the players, whether the, the, the tactics are just not being explained properly or they're not being received properly do you know what I mean like something like that as well so that for me makes a little bit of sense but um that's just my opinion you can obviously share yours in the comments below um and share your comments on all the other topics discussed in today's video because that is you all up to date with the latest Manchester United news and transfer news don't forget to smash a like on the video on your way out subscribe to the channel if you are new and I will see you in the next one